Israeli attitudes toward the Gaza situation, the Palestinian conflict, and Jerusalem's strengthening relationships with some Arab states. These are a few of the subjects that were covered in a new poll by the Mitvim Institute. And here with more on that is our diplomatic correspondent, Mike Wagenheim. And Mike, let's start with the main issue we've been talking about here, the situation in Gaza. Take a look here. This is a uh, survey of the attitudes of Israelis in terms of what Israel is doing in its foreign policy. And as Henry Kissinger so famously said, uh, all uh, foreign policy in Israel is domestic policy. Finger pointing going on with what's happening now with Hamas. Should Israel hold long-term ceasefire negotiations with Hamas? We take a look at the numbers. No, says 51% of those surveyed, including 42% of Jews, only 5% of Arabs. Actually, about the same number said yes to negotiations with the Palestinian Authority, about half, but 51% say no, long-term ceasefire negotiations with Hamas. It's been done, it's been tried, it doesn't work, and uh, over half of Israelis say no more at this point. That's right, and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, despite this, still apparently trying to see if he can get a cease some kind of truce with Hamas. Okay, so that's, uh, in a sense, uh, Israel's government. What about the Trump administration and their policies in the Middle East, the so-called deal of the century? How are Israelis feeling about well, the that? The question was posed, Does Donald Trump's, uh, do Donald Trump's policies advance Israeli-Palestinian peace? I thought the uh, answers here to this question were, uh, were definitely uh, interesting. Only 21% say that Trump's policies actually advance Middle East peace. About 30% say it gets away. But 30% says it has no impact. We've been through all of this. The embassy move, the, uh, the, the, the recognition of the capital, the violence that, that followed in the, in the wake of that. Everything that surrounded Trump's policies and the advancement of the so-called deal of the century, 30% more than any other uh, factor say it's had no impact whatsoever. I found that uh, a, a very uh, extraordinary and a, a bit cynical, I guess, on the part of Israelis. They say it's not going to happen anyway, and it's, it's just not worth it in the end. Now, there were some dramatic diplomatic developments, maybe not in terms of the Palestinians, but Israel's relations with other Arab states. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu with that shock surprise visit to Oman on Friday. What about the whole issue of Israel's strengthening relationships with some of these Arab states? Yeah, we saw Culture Minister Miri Regev celebrating a, a gold medal in international competition in Judo and Abu Dhabi. A few other ministers heading to Arab countries. Let's take a look at the uh, numbers posing this question. Do you think a breakthrough in Israel's ties with Arab countries can be achieved without progress with the Palestinians? 33% of Israeli surveyed says it can only come after progress with Palestinians. About the same number, 36% say it can be done even without progress with the Palestinians. This has really been the question at the core of a lot of the peace process. Do you take, it's a chicken or egg approach, do you take the route first with the Palestinians, make peace with them, and then branch out to the larger Arab world? Or do you use the Arab world as a conduit to get back to the Palestinians? It's about even in what Israelis think can actually happen. That's quite interesting, Mike, but I'm going to assume this polling actually was done before Prime Minister Netanyahu's surprise visit to Oman on Friday, which he could argue is the first real evidence we've seen that there can be some advancement with the Gulf states, for example, without actually making any progress with the Palestinians. Yeah, we've heard the, the things about Saudi Arabia under the radar, the advancements in the relationship for a long time now between Israel and Saudi Arabia, but it's never been made public. It's an open secret at this point. Israel also working, of course, with Egypt and Jordan, the two uh, regional partners and the only ones that Israel has officially uh, relations with, but I think the public has started to catch on that it is in fact possible, and the Israeli public, at least based on these numbers, say that there is just as much of a likelihood, if not more, of relations being normalized with the greater Arab world than with the Palestinians themselves. And that's the track, really, that not only the, the Prime Minister Netanyahu has taken, but also the, the American government. They have tried to bring in the Arab world because they couldn't get Mahmoud Abbas to the peace table by himself. Mike, I just want to get back to the uh, first question about Gaza and negotiations with Hamas, because there has been more and more pressure on the Prime Minister to achieve some kind of quiet. He is trying to pursue, or lead uh, the Egyptians to pursue mediation, but there was a sense there that the Israeli 
public is, in a, is getting fed up and maybe wants to see military action, no matter what, the, despite the cost, I should say. You know, it, it's, we're hearing that. We're starting to now sense that enough is enough. And every time uh, the word is laid out there that a ceasefire is imminent, that it's coming, uh, that Egypt has gotten the job done, two, three days, a week later, more rocket fire, more violence at the border uh, with the riots going on. And especially down south, it's uh, really gotten to a boiling point. However, you've got to keep in mind, much of the country, the great bulk of the country, doesn't live in that area. They don't experience right. on a daily basis, and there is that cognitive dissonance. You see the images on TV, but even an hour, two hours away like we are, it seems so far removed. And I think most of the Israeli public, it's still in the back of their minds, rather at the forefront. Absolutely. Okay, Mike Wagenheim, fascinating. Thank you for that report.